What's going on everyone? John Venus here. I'm joined today with Leo. Link to his channel in the description box below. Today we're going to tackle a topic that a lot of people are probably interested in and it's going to be animal proteins versus plant proteins and which one wins. So what a lot of people talk about and debate over is the bioavailability of protein. So what bioavailability means is how much of the protein is absorbed into your body from different kinds of foods. To be honest with you guys, most studies I've seen actually don't find that much of a big difference between the bioavailability of plant proteins versus animal protein. It's probably somewhere in you know, the range of one to three percent less bioavailable, so it's not a big difference. So when you say it's a lot more bioavailable, it's actually a tiny difference. There are actually big studies like the EPIC study, the uh, European Prospective Investigation to Cancer and Nutrition have done a study looking at how much of the amino acids vegans compared to vegetarians, compared to omnivores, how much they're actually eating and not only how much they're eating but how much they're actually getting absorbed into the blood. So this is bioavailability, so if it was very little bioavailable, it wouldn't go into the blood. So they tested these people and they had all the amino acids that they were consuming were over the uh, recommend daily intakes for vegans as well as all the other groups and these people were, weren't even like they weren't taking supplements or anything they were just eating the way that they usually eat so it's, it's not really that big of a deal as many people think. So next thing we have to cover is nitrogen balance. A lot of people just you know throw the word out there. Nitrogen balance just means you know it's, it's a measurement used to see if you're absorbing enough protein. So the thing is carbohydrates and fats are mostly carbon hydrogen and oxygen while uh, nitrogen is found in proteins so the, the way that is why they use nitrogen as a measurement for your protein so they measure how much nitrogen you take in and how much nitrogen that comes out and if you know the nitrogen coming out is more than what you take in then you're in a negative nitrogen balance while if you're taking in more than you're getting rid of you're in a positive nitrogen balance you're eating more protein than your requirements. Do vegans have a negative nitrogen balance like typically? Obviously not. <laughs> right? No, exactly. That, that's you know that's definitely not the case. So don't worry. Uh, I've read a few studies on this, and uh, most people uh, are actually on a, in a positive nitrogen balance, even going as low as 0.9 or even 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass. So it's very very easy to get actually, exactly. like especially if you're into fitness and you're eating the right foods with like beans, lentils, grains, legumes you're getting way, way, way above that. And obviously we're talking about minimum requirements in general, but we also want to cover a little bit of bodybuilding and fitness and stuff like that. So obviously if you're doing endurance, you don't need as much protein as if you're trying to put on mass and trying to build, yeah. build your body as much as you, as, as you can. And uh, the recommendations there were anywhere between 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram and there are so many people doing more than two grams per kilogram so you know 1.7 was like the highest value that they were recommending that is like the safe zone like you could probably be doing just fine in ter terms of yeah. muscle synthesis you know even below 100 remember that if you're getting enough protein to be healthy the body is constantly making loads of new proteins everything from you know cell membrane proteins to antibodies to hormones you know everything there's so many proteins being made all the time and you also have to remember the body is very good at uh, recycling what it already has so you know you don't need as much new protein to build muscle as a lot of people think so we can't leave out talking about amino acid profiles in the fitness community especially in the bodybuilding community everyone's talking about amino acid profiles that you're not getting complete proteins from plants are plants complete proteins or are they not complete proteins? most people think complete protein means you have all the amino acids in it right but the term complete protein actually doesn't describe that. The term complete proteins means you have very high amounts of yeah. the some specific you know essential amino acids in that protein. One protein might have all the amino acids and another one might have also all the amino acids but just a little bit higher in some of the essential amino acids and therefore that one is pro that one is complete while the other isn't. So let's talk about a little bit of uh, combining foods to get the complete amino acids to build muscle for bodybuilding on a vegan diet. You have to, a lot of people say you have to com uh, combine uh, proteins in every meal. You have to combine rice and beans, chickpeas and, and quinoa, whatever. Is that really necessary? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a really good point to bring up because I think this actually turns a lot of people away from trying this. Yeah. Is that they think that they actually have to, you know, become super uh, organized and they plan out every single meal. As long as you're not eating the same exact food all day, it is almost impossible to go short on amino acid pro on any amino acid while eating enough calories. It actually turns out to be that more of some of these essential amino acids 
sulfur containing amino acids, especially methionine and cysteine, can actually be a negative thing to have too much because these things are actually metabolized into sulfuric acid in the body, which actually creates more acidic environment than acidosis, which is you know, been shown to stimulate inflammation, uh, support cancer growth. But if you don't really care and you want the, the most amount of amino acids, actually tofu is a vegan option. It scores like the second highest on all amino acids. So it's extremely complete. So if you actually care about that, you know, soybean and tofu is one of the best foods for, you know, that purpose. Yeah, and just lentils, legumes in general have very, yeah. very good amino acid profiles yeah. as well. And let's talk a little bit about muscle growth. There are unfortunately no direct studies that you know show the anabolic effects of plant protein versus animal protein at least the studies show the bioavailability uh, between plant protein and animal protein there is not much of a difference at all it's pretty amazing but yeah no no study on postprandial anabolic effects of plant yeah. versus animals there was actually a study comparing rice protein supplementation versus whey protein supplementation and there were no differences in, mm -hmm. in you know the benefits of the recovery or the the muscle growth you know so it was the same for, for both groups and there are a ton of examples of vegan bodybuilders myself included <laughs> that it is possible to build a lot of muscle if you do it right if you're not just eating junk food vegan diets you know just going eating burgers or or cereal all day and oreos it's easy if you're just eating processed foods and soda all day then you that's pretty much the only way you're gonna really get deficient and we also have to remember that you know food is a complete package we can't just you know look at the amino acids if you're eating meat okay you're getting some you know awesome bioavailable proteins and amino acids but there is a lot more going on than just the amino acids that you're looking for and that is the problem with the, the limitation of a lot of these studies that are looking at how much you're intaking right so just because you're eating this much calcium or this much protein or this much iron doesn't mean that this is going to translate to better levels in your blood. That is why we need more studies like the one that we just read about, the EPIC study, who actually looked at the blood levels of the different amino acids in vegans and found that they weren't deficient. Even when you're comparing the, the muscle benefits, the, the difference is extremely tiny, but the health benefits are definitely huge. Remember, it's not always the more the better, whether it's plant or animal proteins. You know, if you're eating an excessive amount of protein, it has been shown to be detrimental to your health. So we're not really comparing, you know, one getting too little and one getting enough. We're comparing one getting a little more than enough and one getting way more than enough, you know. So it's it's not always the more the better. So if you ask me, and I think everyone agrees with me in this perspective, if you don't need to kill an animal for your protein sources, if you don't need to support cruel practices, why do it when there is a better way? It doesn't need to be boring. It can be a lot of fun and saving the planet at the same time, you know, not contributing to the CO2 and methane emissions sounds like a win-win situation and I think a lot of people are starting to open their minds and see this and I'm really pumped up to see, you know, the world changing in this direction. So that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching. Leave a comment if you enjoyed it, share the video, that's the most important thing. Spread the message, get it out there and make sure to subscribe to my channel and to Leo's channel, link in the description box below. Anyway guys, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace out.